So we're talking about the day that everything changed in the Middle East, that day. It was due to a young man, Johann Gutenberg. He was born in 1400 in Mainz, Germany. He was apprentice goldsmith. He cut out gemstones. He went to France, actually, um, working as his apprentice. He melted gold and silver and poured it into little molds and made lots of little jewelry out of the gold and silver. But he was wondered how he could mold letters, maybe in the same way, and then dip this metal into ink and press it out on paper. Hmm. Um, maybe he could even make hundreds of copies at once. So Johann Gutenberg had a dream. He dreamt, probably day and night, of this new invention he would call the printing press. He returned to Germany and he spent all of his money, everything that he had, on trying to invent this new printing machine. He needed just the right kind of metal he tried tin and lead and iron, even a poisonous um, metal called antimony. And he had to have something that was soft enough to press without shattering, but hard enough to stay and keep the shape. And then there was the ink. The ink. He had to have just the right kind of ink that would cling to the metal, but not too much because he couldn't smear it, then no one would be able to read it. And it had to be able to come off the metal and not dry in the metal. Artists at that time had used this oil-based paint, linseed oil. In fact, one of the artists in your book, um, John Ben Eyck, used that. And then he took this um, oil and he mixed it with charcoal and this charcoal mix worked pretty good. I thought, wow, I might have some ink that will that'll work. They wouldn't need those feather pens in writing anymore. And then he had to have the right kind of paper. The parchment paper would not work. The paper they made with the animals would not work very well. So he thought about the Chinese type of um, paper that was actually one-sixth of the cost of the parchment paper that was used in Europe. So he thought, I'll use that. And then he had to have a way to press the ink into the paper. So he had to develop some kind of machine where it could press down and move up and press down and move up over and over again to lift up and down. And he looked at this wine press they used to press the juice out of grapes. And he said, hmm. Maybe we could use that. So he took that to use as part of his printing press. And now, what book would they purchase first? They had to make um, all the letters, you know, and, and put it all together, but they had to first of all pick a book. So what do you think book they picked? Of course, Johann Gutenberg, he was a Christian. And he thought, we should do the Bible first. And so then he said, basically, taking the Bible, each letter, like I said, to make every single letter, he had to make every single letter of the alphabet, and then he had to transform them page by page um, onto a tablet that would print down on um, the printing press. So this would take several years to get all these letters, to get these letters, and then to organize them, you know, into a page of the Bible. But he decided he was going to do it. He was going to spend his lifetime if he had to. Well, it, it took time, but, but not as long as it took to actually copy the Bible with a feathered pen and ink. So in getting set up, he felt he could set this up. And then after he set it up, he could just go away and print hundreds of hundreds of copies. It was in his mind. So he hired 20 people to help him. So he had 20 helpers. So he had to spend a lot of money, of course. <laughs> and he took that first Bible and he, they finished that first Bible. 
Um, there were 641 sheets of paper, 1,282 pages in two volumes. He printed 300 um, sheets a day with, the, with six, six presses. He had to let one dry before he could, one page dry before he could start the next, next drive. So then within that year, um, and he started, also had to hire and bind these copies together he printed 200 copies. 23 of those copies still exist today. It's so amazing. We could have those copies of Gutenberg Bible still. Now, when the Bible copies started coming out, you know, people started wondering and thinking, man, we could write anything now. And so then the doctors came and they wanted to write medical books. The schools came and said, we need to put down our grammar and some grammar. We need math and dictionaries and encyclopedias for the schools. Then the lawyers came and they needed some books for their legal um, books, for, their, for all, all of the work they were doing in the law and putting the laws together. The merchants for their businesses, they needed to tr their transactions recorded. But even the state officials and the kings, they wanted to write down um, basically all of all, all of whatever they did, they wanted in, to written down as a historic document. But not just written down, they could send copies. Religious writings like Thomas Aquinas spread because of the printing press. They even had books on how to do things like, you know, how to play chess. Can you imagine that? There was a book by William Caxton how to play checks, chess. So uh, directions on a lot of things, even map makers would use the printing press. And most of all right now, people wanted to learn how to read. They wanted to know how to read. Since books were coming available, even the common person could own a book and they could read a book. How spectacular is that change? The Renaissance started. And that's when the Renaissance started spreading from Italy, from Florence and Venice, um, and from Rome all to the rest of Europe. Because now they had books coming available. Johann Gutenberg invested all of his money into, the, into printing and actually had to borrow some money. And in your book, it talks about this guy named Fust who... Um, came and lent him some money. Johann couldn't pay it back, so he took ownership of all of his printing presses. Kind of crazy, kind of crazy. But printing started becoming very popular, and um, they actually started making a lot of money. Not Johann, but other people. They took its spread, and others borrowed his technique, and it's estimated that um, in the year 1500, 1,000 printers printed thousands and millions of printed items on the printing press. It still wasn't easy. They still had several steps. They had to mold the letters backwards and then make a frame to hold the letters and put the letters in backwards into the frame. They had ink, put ink all over the letters and then apply the paper and um, making the paper, applying on the paper in the machine and then they had to press, have somebody to press the letters into the paper. They had to cut the paper then, and they had to assemble the paper into the book and the binding. So they would still need a lot of helpers, but they were still printing tons of books and people were buying them. So that a lot of people were becoming wealthy in the printing business. Books became less expensive, and more people learned to read because of that. And books became available to the middle class. Now ordinary people could read books. History books were copied from the back from the copies from Greece and Rome. The first book was about the Trojan War, and many read that book. And then, of course, we have Marco Polo's Great Adventures that came, and Explorers and Journeys were written down, and they were copied, and people could read about them. Scientists read about Aristotle and Plato and Socrates, and, and scientists could pass on their information, invention, other inventions, and more things, more inventions became popular. And then, of course, the direction in 1474, we even have the game of chess. 
became popular um, because of the printing press and other games too that they played, you that are gaming kids. <laughs> the impact of printing. The impact of printing was huge. Information circled faster and quicker than ever before. More books and information were av available and more people learned to read, like I said, and, and the books were more accurate because they didn't have to use so many, write so many letters by hand that each letter would be accurate and it'd be standardized so they could read the letters easier. And they didn't have to memorize so much. And then the new businesses, the paper mills would develop and, and people would start the businesses of making letters. So other businesses started. Johann Gutenberg, he was credited for this great invention. And he did finally re um, receive pension for his invention. That means he received money for his invention, but not so much money. He did, the credit has to go, some of the credit would have to go to the Chinese because they actually invented the mov movable type many hundreds of years before. But Johann Gutenberg put it all together and made it popular with metal, with the metal um, printing press. Johann died in 1468, and he wasn't a wealthy man. Other people had taken his wealth from him. But one thing, he was great and well in heaven. You see, because of the printing press, um, it, it impacted the world around. People wanted to read the Bible for themselves. And, you know, they used to burn those Bibles when they'd get mad. The church would get mad and burn the Bibles that were written. But do you know? Do you know? they just print up some more Bibles. Christians were now able to read the gospel, be able to read the Old Testament. And they were started to translate these into their own languages. They could even read them in their own, read the Bible in their own language. Hope would be kindled again, the hope of Jesus in the darkest of ages would shine. <laughs> I thank God for Johann Gutenberg and his printing press. You see, it changed the world forever. And it changed being able to share the gospel in a major way to the dark world at that time and even today so thank you Johann Gutenberg amen <laughs>